Hello, welcome. Thank you for clicking through to this video, which I've made upon request. And I'll go through the process here of what happens when you press the primer bulb too many times. I've got a couple of examples here, but I'll be mainly looking at the four stroke and then I'll explain with the two stroke after. Basically, it's to the same ends. It causes the same sort of issue. So here we go. And so let's have a look at a carburetor then. So we've got this here. This is one that we normally find on some lawn mowers. We've got the primer bulb in the middle there got the air filter at the top and of course down the bottom here is the fuel tank. And I'm only using this type of carburettor as an example. It's not specific to this type of carburettor, what actually goes on when you press the primer bulb too many times. It's normally pretty general across the board. So I'm only using this as an example because I have drawings of this already. And I can explain my point using this. But in order for me to explain things the way I want to, I'm going to have to make a diagrammatic model of this. So there we go, everything's just the same there, but we can see into it a little better now. And what I'll do now, I'll move this carburettor over slightly, and I will put next to it this, this actual carburettor, but from a side view. So we can now see a cross-sectional view of its side. And the reason I want to show the side view like this is because I can much easier show the flow of fuel going in through the inlet. I realise that looking at the carburettors now in this diagrammatic state, if you like, it does look pretty daunting, it does look pretty complicated, but what I don't want to concentrate on at this stage is how these carburetors actually work, because I've got a full video on how these carburetors actually fully work. So I just want to concentrate on the primer bulb. So if we come to the primer bulb then, and let's imagine we're all primed up, and all we need to do is press that primer bulb now before we start the engine. So we press the primer bulb. And instantly we can see that we've squirted some fuel into the inlet area there of the carburettor. And so that's squirted in and it's come to rest here at the bottom there of the inlet area. Now as we know, these primer bulbs have to be pressed a certain number of times. Sometimes three, sometimes four, sometimes five, depending on what the manufacturer specifies for that particular machine. And of course we've got to get that right because too little and the engine won't start, but too many times will result in what I'm about to show you. And let's say that the manufacturer has stated that this particular carburetor needs to be pumped three times for optimal engine starting. And with this one, we've already done the one pump already, and that's resulted in the fuel down here, lying here at the bottom of the carburetor's inlet. The amount I've shown here is probably not due to scale. I've only shown it this way just for example purposes. And so in accordance to what the manufacturer states, this isn't enough yet to get the engine going. We need to pump it another two times. And so we'll press it again then, and we can see now we've got more fuel coming in, and we've got more there lying on the bottom of the inlet. And so this is a result of the second pump. And remember, the amount I'm showing here isn't true to scale, but what we need to do now is press it a third time, and we can see more fuel coming in, which is added to all of that fuel. And so now we've done three pumps, we could say that this is the amount of fuel the manufacturer requires to start the engine. But if we push too many times, so let's push some more. And as we know, it's just going to keep filling the bottom here of the inlet. And not only that, it's going to start leaking back here. And this is just going to keep getting fuller and fuller, basically. The more we press the primer bulb now, the more that the fuel is going to come into this inlet here. And that fuel will build up to such levels that it will start to flow in towards the engine, even before we start the engine. Now, I'm not saying this will happen specifically on specifically two or three extra pumps. I'm just making an example that when this area here gets full more than it should do because we've primed it too many times, then this will happen. But let's imagine now that it has happened and we've got this extra fuel down there that we shouldn't have. Let's have a look now at what happens when we try to start the engine. So we've got the carburetor sitting there at the moment doing nothing. So we reach down and pull the starter pull cord. And as soon as we do, we can see that the engine's starting to draw air in through the carburetor here. So it flows down and enters inside the inlet area there. And as it passes the top of this fuel here that's lying at the bottom, it picks it up because it's traveling at such high velocity. It picks it all up and then starts to draw it in towards the engine. So the engine's actually drawing in the air and it's, as it's pulling in the air, it's actually pulling this fuel in with it. And as all that air rushes past, it does actually draw fuel out of the jet to actually take over the engine running. But of course, it doesn't get that far because there's so much fuel going in through the inlet there that it all goes into the engine in a mass cluster, if you like, of fluid. And without it being atomized first, 
that it actually quenches the spark plug and prevents the engine from even getting started. So we've got nothing going on in there now at all. And regardless of how many times we pull the starter pull cord now, if we've got too much fuel gone in there into the engine on top of the piston, then we're not really going to get that engine going unless we do some engine work on it and we take the spark plug out and clean it and clean out the barrel of fuel etc. But that could be another video. I won't go into what we do there now. And so now we can see the importance of sticking to the recommendations of how many primer pumps we need to pump with these types of carburettor. As I've said so far we've just looked at a four stroke carburettor although it is a specific design of carburettor that I've shown you it's sort of general across the board what will happen if we press too many times as I've said. Now if we come to a two stroke carburettor similar to this one which we normally find on things such as edge cutters and strimmers then although the principles the same of what will actually happen to the engine if we press too many times we've actually got a good indicator on these type of carburetors that prevents us from actually pressing too many times and I'll show why. If we look down here we've got two pipes we'll have an inlet pipe there the flow inward for the fuel from the fuel tank and then we've got a, an outlet pipe there that flows back to the fuel tank and generally these pipes are transparent and that's what helps give us that indication. And so to explain what happens here we press the primer bulb so if you look there the primer bulb's now pressed and then we let go and as soon as we let go it starts to suck up fuel into that pipe and then we press the primer bulb again and then let it go and we can see that the fuel has actually come into the carburetor now and has started to fill up the fuel bulb there. And so, as I've said, because it's starting to fill this fuel bulb here, it means that the fuel is actually filling inside the carburetor now, so it's actually becoming primed. And when we push this fuel bulb, once more now, we're pushing that fuel out of the bulb, and it's going down through the return. So now it's going back towards tank. But as I've tried to indicate there, we can see that there isn't a solid a mass of fuel coming down this return pipe yet. There's some air coming down with it. So the carburetor's not totally primed at the moment and there's a little bit more priming to do. So we, we release the primer bulb and this time it fills full of fuel because we've, we've got rid of all of that air that was in the last press. And we've got a good amount of fuel coming up from the tank coming into the carburetor. And so this time we should have a solid amount of fuel coming out through down into the return here. So if we press the primer bulb now we can see that we've got a good solid amount of fuel now coming down this pipe and there's no air and it's just fuel as I've said. So at the moment we could say that this carburetor's primed. Now we, like I've said we might need to press this primer bulb a few times in order to get it to this state. I've only done this just on a couple of pumps just to get straight to the point. Now, although this carburetor is now primed and we can see that the carburetor has got all that fuel in there because we can see it returning to tank out of the carburetor, remember that now each time we press the primer bulb that some fuel will squirt out into the middle here, into the inlet, and then be taken in towards the engine. So it's now that we can count the primes for the amount of fuel that we're going to put into there. But what I'm trying to say is until we see the fuel returning, down this pipe then this carburetor isn't primed enough in order to get that primer bulb working to start the engine because in a nutshell until we do see that fuel in that return pipe there's simply not enough fuel up there in order to be pressed into the inlet itself and on the other side of the coin we now know that when we do see fuel coming down this pipe here that it's at that point that we're going to start getting fuel injected into the inlet area here of the carburetor. And so when we do see that fuel coming out of that pipe we know that each press now is going to deliver some fuel into the middle there of the carburetor into the inlet so that will help us now to be mindful of how much fuel we're actually putting in there whether it's too much or too little. Okay I hope that explains things there and I've only gone into this very basically as I've mentioned and please do stick to manufacturers recommendations for these types of carburetors and if you want me to do a video on something please do mention that in the comments section this video again was generated through regard to a comment please if you have benefited from this video please like and subscribe thank you for watching